Hi, and welcome to this short video on phone macros using PhoneView from Unified FX. With PhoneView, you can update multiple phones at once using a macro. A macro is a sequence of actions, the same actions that a user would perform locally, but sent remotely. You can use one of the built-in model independent macros, or you can create your own. PhoneView's built-in macros can be used with a mixture of phone models. You can delete thousands of ITL files and CTL files remotely in a single click. The built-in macro will automatically unlock each phone if necessary. It is now very easy to bulk update TFTP settings. This makes moving phones between clusters or to the cloud very easy. PhoneView also has a built-in macro for selecting phone backgrounds, ideal for Communication Manager Express endpoints. Here is a demonstration of built-in macros in action. Here we have a mixture of 8800 series and 7800 series phones, and we're going to update the TFTP server configuration. In Notepad here, I've got a set TFTP server command. I simply copy that, paste it into the command bar, and all I have to do is send this out to these devices. Beforehand, I'm just going to validate the current alt TFTP configuration. So we can see that there, that it's turned off right now. When we send the set TFTP server command, it's going to turn on alt TFTP and enter the IP address that was specified inside the command. To, to update the TFTP server value, we simply use the query device info operation and that will refresh the alt TFTP state. So let's go to screen view, let's select the devices and let's send that command. And if we watch carefully, we can see the sequence of key presses being sent out to those phone models. It's navigating the settings menu, it's turning on Alt TFTP, it's entering in the IP address, and even though it's a mixture of phone models, because the software knows the model of the phone, it can send the correct key sequence accordingly. So there we are, it's just finishing up updating the TFTP server value. And if we go back to data view, Control A to select all the phones, query, device info, and uh, these devices. We can now see the alt TFTP is now turned on, and in this case, the TFTP server value has been set. In this case, we've just set it to the same IP address, just for demonstration purposes, but that could obviously be another cluster, or even the onboarding process to move phones to the WebEx calling service in the cloud. Now, let's turn off Alt TFTP. So to do that, I go back to Notepad here, and we use this other command, which is clear TFTP server. So let's copy it, paste it into the macro command bar. And notice, I don't have to reset the state of the phone. Uh, these commands will automatically get the phone to the initial state and then navigate from there. So if I simply click Send again, and if we watch, it resets the phone state, re-enters the settings menu, navigates down to the appropriate section, and in this case turns off Alt TFTP, and updates all those devices in a matter of minutes. Because all remote control actions are logged, you can use the log entries to create a custom macro. Simply perform the desired actions on a single phone, then create a macro from the activity log. In order to provide control of action timings, PhoneView includes a pause command. This will wait for one second by default with an optional argument in milliseconds. Macros are a simple text string with a list of URI commands, the same URI feature Cisco phones use natively, but separated by the pipe character. The simple text format makes it easy to save and edit macros whilst exposing the full capabilities of Cisco phones and PhoneView. Here is a demonstration of how to record and use your own macros. To begin with, we're going to empty or clear the activity log. These are where the actions are going to be recorded and we're going to capture our macro from there. If we right click, inside the activity log and choose clear. Now we pick the phone we're going to capture the commands from, so just this first device here, 
and when I press the settings button you can see that's captured an activity log and obviously the settings is opened up on the phone. Now I'm going to perform a sequence of actions and I'm going to set the background image to the factory default. In between these steps I'm going to take a manual phone screenshot by clicking the phone screenshot button. I'll explain why in a moment. Let me just proceed through here. So we take a screenshot, we choose user preferences, another screenshot, phone backgrounds, another screenshot. In this case we want the first image, so that's number one. Take a screenshot and we want to select that, so that's soft key one. Take another screenshot, we want to save it, so that's soft key two. Take a screenshot, we should be finished now, so we'll just press the settings button. Okay, so we've done that on the first phone, and if we go down to the activity log, and if we scroll up to the top, choose the first command in the log, hold shift and down arrow, and work our way down, and select all those log entries. And with doing that, if I now right click again inside the activity log, this time I choose the create macro option at the bottom. And if you look in the command bar up here, it's going to populate those sequence of actions inside there. Now, just to make this a bit easier to read and understand, if I right click and copy out that command, I'll go into notepad and paste it in there. And I'll just talk you through it a little bit. Now these are the raw commands that we send to the phone. Uh, the phone itself understands a whole range of URI instructions. That's all documented on Cisco's website. But what you'll notice I did is I took a screenshot in between. Now the structure is quite simple. It's the URI and then it's the pipe character separating them. And that's our sequence of actions. Now when you're actually performing an action, there's a natural delay between each key press. So the timing's taken care of with the kind of interaction that you perform. However, if we just sent the key sequence without any other consideration, we might basically press buttons too quickly. Hence why I performed a screenshot, it adds a natural delay between each key press. However, if you're going to do a large number of instructions to thousands of phones, for example, you don't really want to be doing screenshots unnecessarily using resources without requirement. Instead, uh, you should use something like our pause command. So that's cmd colon pause. So if I simply replace the word screenshot with pause, um, that instead will put a one second delay in where the pause command is and uh, you know handle the timing uh, nice and easily. But I can also customize the delay. If I do colon and enter a number in milliseconds, that will now give us, in this case, a three second delay. So that gives you full control over both the sequencing and timing of the key presses that you want to perform. And that allows you to do a whole manner of, you know, potentially complex key sequences in a simple string format. And you can simply, you know, build up a little catalog or library of those macros depending on the type of updates that you want to perform. Now, let's see this macro in action. So. I'm just going to select all these devices. I'll just leave the current macro as I recorded it because it's quite helpful to see the steps being performed with that screenshot. And all I have to do is click send. That macro will get sent to all the selected devices. And in this case, it will reset the background image to the factory default. There we go. We can see it stepping its way through all of the phones and it's reset them successfully. Thank you for watching this video. I suggest you go to unifiedfx.com and take a copy of our software. Give it a try and see what you think for yourself.